Time now for an in-depth look at the market action. We're joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Iwa Women's University. Professor Kim, great to have you with us today. Good afternoon. Right. First of all, the U.S. Fed warns China's property problems, specifically the Evergrande crisis, could have a spillover effect across the world, changing its previous stance from September. Uh, to what degree will the issue impact the global market? Well, I pretty much agree with uh, U.S. Fed's new analysis over the impact of Evergrande's uh, bankruptcy, because China covers the bottom of uh, global production chain and the financial market. Uh, in September, U.S. Fed Chairman Powell said that uh, Evergrande's bankruptcy problem would be limited to Chinese economy. But U.S. Fed's financial stability report, which is very important report of the year, is released last Monday, and it made it clear that Evergrande's uh, financial problem can be spread to U.S. financial system. Uh, it argues that stresses in the real sector in China, caused in part by Beijing's uh, ongoing regulatory focus on, on uh, indebted institutions, could uh, pose some risk to U.S. financial system. Uh, particularly, the report points out that China's real estate market uh, financial problem as one of the three major uh, near-term risks of the U.S. financial uh, system. And the major U.S. indices reach new highs, of course, at one point, but we're seeing some declining numbers. Tesla dipped 12 percent. PayPal also experienced a 10 percent slide. So what are some of the key contributing factors? Uh, U.S. stock fell back from record levels Tuesday, uh, breaking on eight straight day uh, rise. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, ticked down by 0.3 percent, and the technology-focused NASDAQ Composite fell 0.6 uh, percent. Uh, the majority of investors does, uh, does not view uh, yesterday's pullback as a bad sign of the market. Instead, they see it is a, a breather after a long rally uh, recently. Uh, the recent rise in U.S. market is propelled by strong third quarter earnings, uh, and stocks have continued to trend upward against the backdrops of supply chain issues and concerns about inflation. Uh, all Asian markets dropped along with U.S. market uh, today. Uh, Shanghai index retreated uh, by 0.4 uh, percent uh, thanks to very high uh, product, uh, producers' price level, over 13 percent. But Hong Kong market gained by 0.6 percent. Back here in the nation, Korean stocks also showed that clients of COSX stood out, of course. And among the powerhouses, we had um, Hyundai Motors, Kia, and, of course, LG Cam dipping. While Samsung Electronics and Kakao remain solid. What's your overall analysis of the domestic market today? Along with U.S. markets uh, decline yesterday, there was huge downward adjustment in domestic market today. Investors became more worried about interest rate hikes by Bank of Korea, ongoing inflation and shortages of raw materials, particularly in uh, urea solution shortage shock. Also, domestic companies weakening earnings gave more concerns on, on, on the market. Uh, Kospi dropped by almost 1.1 percent, and cost stock also dropped over 2.1 percent in a single day. In, in this declining market, uh, however, Celtrion, Cacao Bank, and Crafton gained over 2 percent among top 30 uh, large cap stocks. And the global supply bottleneck situation, of course, is continues to persist. It's affecting countries highly dependent on trade. And uh, we've, we've seen some decoupling between the U.S. and South Korean markets. How are investors swayed by such developments? Uh, I think the fundamental difference uh, between U.S. market and Korean market is on business uh, performances of companies. Uh, recently, U.S. market notched its highest close as investors became happy with earnings report uh, to see how com U.S. companies are managing inflation and supply chain woods. Uh, according to third quarter earnings report of, of major companies, uh, roughly four out of five have beaten profit forecast. So to, the two benchmarks of, uh, of Dow Jones Industrial and NASDAQ uh, all up at least 6.5 percent in this quarter, uh, according to my calculation. On the other hand, it looks that uh, domestic market is going through adjustment period as, as concerns on domestic inflation, higher interest, and 
uh, ongoing bottleneck trouble in global production chain. Uh, and, and also, we do not see something like an impressive earnings, uh, uh, earnings report of the major companies except uh, Samsung Electronics. Well, Professor last week before we let you go, for months we've been seeing improvements in employment figures. Some question the quality of the jobs available and those taken. What do we see when we put the numbers under a microscope? According to Statistics uh, Korea, the number of employed people reached uh, 27.74 million uh, last month. Uh, it is 652,000 more than a uh, year earlier. Uh, Korean economy has reported job growth since March of this year as, as the economy is recovering from the pandemic. It also added more than uh, 600,000 jobs for the second consecutive month in October. Uh, the job recovery has been expanded on the back of uh, robust exports and last year's uh, lower base. Uh, however, despite the overall job recovery, employment in person segment, such as uh, accommodations and retail, still remains fragile uh, due to resurgence of uh, COVID-19 cases. The, the wholesale and retail sector reported a, a fall of 113,000 jobs. The art, sports, leisure segment saw job decrease uh, 26,000 a year. The manufacturing sector, uh, which is a backbone of the uh, Korean economy, reported only a fall of 13,000 jobs uh, last month. Clearly, the impact of the pandemic can be felt throughout various job sectors. Professor Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your insights. Thank you for having me today.